Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the double exposure effect that we're going to be working on. And these are the images that we're using. First of all, an image of the couple and then an image of a couple holding hands. And this is the result that we're looking to achieve. Now to get our double exposure effect, we're going to need two images. Obviously, I have a image of a bride and groom and I have also a bride and groom holding hands. Now I'm just using stock imagery, but you would of course be using images of your bride and your groom. Now to start off with, we need to put these two images in the same Photoshop document. So we're just going to select one of these documents as being the target document. And then we're going to put the other one in on top. Now, I happen to know that this is the larger of the two images, so I'm going to take the smaller one and put it on top. So let's go to the smaller image. I'll right click and choose Duplicate Layer. What this allows me to do is to make a duplicate or a copy of this layer, but I want to make a copy of this layer into another image. Well, all I need to do down here is to select that other image as the destination for that new layer. And I'll just click OK. Now if we go to the original image, here we have a couple and now we have a couple holding hands as the topmost layer. So I'm going to just enlarge this image. Now typically I wouldn't encourage you to be enlarging images, but since we're here to make a double exposure effect anyway, and since we're not enlarging it very much, it doesn't really matter. So let's select that as the image that we're going to use. So there's the top layer and the bottom one. And I'm just going to crop everything at this stage just to that size so that we've removed the excess from the topmost layer. Now we're going to blend these two layers together. So we're going to click on the topmost layer and then we're going to start running down the blend modes. And we're going to see if there's something here that we like. And I think soft light is going to be pretty good. I'm kind of liking that soft light effect, but let's go all the way through and see if we see anything else that we like. Now, if there's not anything that you particularly like, don't give up at this point because you might find that the blending between the two layers is different if you have the other layer on top. So I'm going to take this background layer here and just drop it onto the new layer icon. I'm going to drag it above this image where they're holding hands. Now I need to make sure that the image layer where the couple are holding hands has its blend mode set to normal. That's going to be critical because we want this image to be at just a normal image and we want to blend this top one into it. So again, I'm going to do the same thing and just run down the blend modes and see if anything particularly takes my fancy. Now overlay is reasonably good. Soft light is not as good perhaps as it was in the other image. Here is hard light and we can just go again through these blend modes. So just be aware that you're going to get perhaps in some instances slightly different results depending on which of these images is on top. Now I actually like soft light and I like the images the other way around. So for now I'm just going to turf this background layer because I don't need it. I'm going to duplicate this background layer so that I have the couple holding hands and I'm just going to sandwich the couple between two versions or two exact copies of the couple holding hands. And the reason for this is that I may want to decrease the opacity of this middle image and I want something to capture that decreased opacity later on. So let's go to this top layer and let's just go down the blend modes again because I think I'm headed to soft light. So here's soft light and I'm getting a really nice effect here. The problem is that I'm not really seeing the hand quite as clearly as I might want to. Well, I'm going to select the middle layer here and I'm just going to drop the opacity down a little bit and see if that helps. Well, yes, it does. I'm going to continue to drop it down 
probably to something around 50% because that's giving me the sleeve and the hands a lot more clearly with the bridal couple in the middle. Now at the moment I'm a little bit concerned about this jacket here. For a start it looks like there's this big whopping stain here which has been caused by the two layers interacting but also it's pretty dark. So let's go now to this topmost layer and let's see if we can lighten it a little bit. I'm going to do that with an adjustment layer. So I'm going to choose layer, new adjustment layer and I'll just use curves. Now I need to make sure that this is clipped to just the layer underneath. I don't want it to affect the entire image, just the layer immediately below. So by clicking this icon here, I'm clipping it to only affect the couple holding hands image. And because I want to lighten it, I'm just going to drag up on this end of the curve. I don't want to take it too far to the point at which the image is getting destroyed, but I do want to lighten it quite a bit. I'm not really worried about what's happening to the rest of the hand here. I'm just looking at lightening the sleeve here. So when I've got that in place, I'm just going to close that dialog. And you can see that we have a mask here on this adjustment layer. And what I can do is use the mask to isolate the lightness to only this sleeve area and not to the rest of the image. I'm going to select the gradient tool here. And now I'm going to select this black to white gradient. I'm going to target my mask and I'm going to start drawing on it. Now I'm just going to test it first of all to make sure it's going in the right direction. Well, yes it is. I want the black edge of my mask to be over the area that I want to retain the way it was before I added this curves adjustment. And I really just want the curves adjustment to affect this area here. So while my gradient looks pretty good, it's probably just not far enough across the image. So I'm just going to have another go at drawing it now that I know which direction it's supposed to be headed in. And I can keep drawing it until I get the effect that I want. And let's just test it. This is the before and this is the after. And you can see that it's lightened up this sleeve just a little bit. Now I'm still worried about what looks like a stain through the sleeve. So let's go back down now to our image where the bride and the bridegroom are and see if we can fix it here. Now we've got this at normal blend mode right now. The opacity is about 60%. Well, I'm going to take the opacity all the way up right now just so we can see what the issue is. Well, here's the problem. We've got some sort of dark grasses here that when they're overlapping the groom's sleeve are causing it to look a little bit as if the groom's sleeve has a stain on it. There are a number of ways that we could solve this problem and one of them is just to try and lighten this edge of the image. So again, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, and let's add curves. And again, we want this to be clipped to the layer immediately below, so I'm going to clip it. And I'm also going to lighten this up quite a bit. At the same time, I think I can get rid of a little bit of this by just cloning. So I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool and with a reasonable size soft brush, I'm just going to Alt or Option click on that area and just lighten up and just remove that area that might have been causing some of the stain on the groom sleeve. And now let's put things back the way they came. I've got my layers back and I need to drop the opacity of this layer down quite a bit. Now last time I had it sitting at about 60%, so I'm just going to drop it back down to around that 60%. I think that the bride and groom are still a little bit light, but we can fix that by adjusting this mask because this is the mask that's causing them to be light. So if I isolate the lightness to just this edge of the image, I should be right. So again, I'm going back to get my gradient tool. I'm going to click on this mask to select it and let's just test that we're going the right way with the gradient. Well, we're not. We're going, we need to go this way. And I think I've pretty much nailed that the first time round. I think this is a pretty good result here.
Now the only thing that I'm thinking at this point that I might do is to actually move the bride and groom across just a little bit. So I'm going to grab these two layers, the bride and groom layer and the adjustment layer that is affecting them. I'm going to pick up the Move tool. I'm just going to move them across a little bit. So they're a little bit more central in the image. By selecting both those layers, I'm making sure that I'm taking the mask and the image together. And now we just need to crop it. And here's our final double exposure look. We've taken two images, we've experimented with trying to put them together with blend mode to see not only which blend mode looks best, but also to see which order these layers appear best in when they are blended together. And then we've made some finer adjustments to the image to lighten up the sleeve here and also to lighten up the background so we don't get that sort of stained sleeve look that we were getting earlier. So that's an interesting way of creating a double exposure effect in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.